which it just turned just now. Um, so welcome to your afternoon tracks after our break. Um, this is Authorities in Evergreen, You Can Too, with Jessica Efron from the State Library of North Carolina. I'm Kate Coleman, I'm from Missouri Evergreen, and I will be moderating this session with you all today. Um, we do wanna thank our sponsors, our champion sponsors, uh, Equinox uh, was, is our feed loop platform sponsor, ECDI is our captioning sponsor, and Kipu is our Hackfest sponsor, which will be happening on Thursday. Okay, Jessica, you can try to share your screen and you should just be able to take over. It's saying I can't share screen while the other participant is sharing. Well, how about I stop sharing? Oh, okay, let me try that again. Hi, everyone. We see, I see you, but not your screen. Okay, let me see if I can, I apologize. I am not in my own office, which is a cubicle. I am in a fancy office. There we go. I believe I have selected their big screen. Can you see authorities in Evergreen? You can too with the State Library of North Carolina Crest? Unfortunately, no. Okay. There we go. Okay. There may be another fuzzy transition when I have to toggle between my PowerPoint and live talking. So I apologize in advance if that happens. Jessica, one more question before we get started. Um, can you see if you can open chat? And would if not, um, would you like me to ask the questions as they come through chat or do you wanna save questions for the end? Let's save questions for the end where I will try to find them in chat. Um, I think I'm going to have to read my presentation. So I am going to keep the chat probably off to the side out of my way for the time being. Okay, we're ready. Hi, I'm Jessica Efron. I'm a cataloger at the State Library of North Carolina in Raleigh, and we are part of the NC Cardinal Consortium. I'm also part of the Catal Evergreen Authorities Working Group, a subset of the Catalogers Interest Group. Our little group grew from confusion and curiosity surrounding authorities in Evergreen. A few of us shared the initial progress and goals at last year's conference. And since then, we've had a busy year of working meetings, documentation, and playing with authorities in the authorities test server that the King County Library System made for us. Now I'm here to share a few things that we've figured out over the year. This talk will be a brief description of the concept of authorities with some demonstrations of authorities work in Evergreen. And we'll finish with some frequently asked questions because FAQs is how the authority working group began to tackle all of this. So let's do some authorities in Evergreen. You can too. Okay. An authority is a resource that helps us be consistent in our metadata entry. Authority sources decide on one preferred term for an entity, topic, or concept. They then list variations in spelling, terminology, and past usage. The authority for gasoline, for example, might list petrol and gas as non-preferred terms. Authorities are particularly useful for distinguishing between people with similar names and for providing uniform corporate names, especially when there's hierarchy and acronyms at play. Searching for non-preferred terms like outdated colloquial spelling variations still points you to the authorized term when working with authorities. Authority data is maintained by organizations or institutions across the world. They're usually searchable through a database, often available in the organization's website. Catalogers use the database to determine an authorized term for inclusion in the metadata. Most authority vocabularies are non-proprietary and free. Here are examples of two organizations whose vocabularies I work every day. Um, our NC Digital Collection uses the Getty vocabularies for both genre and geographic terms in our database. This image from the Getty Thesaurus of geographic names shows the many ways one might type in the country we know as Turkey. 
and the Getty heading is at the top next to the three uh, blue dots, uh, Turkey Nation would be the authorized heading in my digital database. Um, on the right, American librarians will be familiar with the Library of Congress vocabularies. This is the name authority file for Shorty Ranger. He was born Edwin Haberfield. Most um, US libraries use Library of Congress vocabularies for names, subjects, and possibly genres. The Library and Archives of Canada has created an LAC vocabulary to supplement Library of Congress subjects. There are many more authority sources, uh, Homosaurus, medical subject headings, FAST, and Sears are a few popular English language ones. Okay, so how do these external sources fit into Evergreen? Evergreen has built in authority tables, much like it has bibliographic tables and circulation tables. You can bring authority records into the authority table or create authority records locally by hand, just like you would treat a bib record. One can run reports on authority records from the tables. Evergreen authority records use MARC 21 format for authorities. This format is complementary to the more familiar bibliographic MARC we use for bib records. The complementary formatting allows the records to make connections or link to bib records. These are some examples of the MARC format for authority data, data from records uh, from NC Cardinal. They're somewhat familiar. You can see that you have your fixed fields and some numeric fields that look pretty identical to standard MARC. In authority records, the authorized term is called the main entry. And the main entry in any authority file lives in the 1XX field. We say 1XX because the main entry field number depends on the data type. A subject main entry, like fisheries on the left, is a 150. A geographic would be a 151. An author main entry is in a 100 field, like Dr. Seuss on the right. A corporate main entry would be in a 110 field. And then titles can inhabit a 111 for a conference title or a 130 for a book title. Non-preferred terms associated with the main entry live in the related 4XX fields. So for fisheries, it's 450s. For Dr. Seuss, it's 400s. And these are known as use for synonyms or non-preferred terms. The Dr. Seuss example has a lot of 400s, which are ways that one might type in hop on pop in either Chinese characters or phonetically. And the authority record then points you to the English authorized term for hop on pop in Chinese. And then some authority records also have 5XX fields that contain related terms, usually broader terms or associated names. The fisheries example has some 550s for fishery sciences or other related topics. You might also see pseudonyms, um, historic names or past names like for businesses or government agencies and just other related names or terms in the 5XX fields. And then the rest of the authority uh, formatting just has the RDA descriptors, sometimes those are in the 300s fields. Um, and most of the notes, since the 500 fields are used as the use also terms, most of the notes are in 600 fields. There can be notes to other catalogers in the 670s and then origin notes and sources in the 667s. So it's pretty familiar. And Evergreen wants to link your bib fields to the data in these authority tables. When you bring in or create a new bib record, Evergreen will automatically run the text in all linkable fields against the authority tables overnight. You can also, also manually link linkable fields from within a bib record. Linking bib records to the authority table allows universal updates when an authority record is updated. Say an old outdated term is modernized or your library is trying to update like DEIA topics uh, that are kind of questionable in Library of Congress vocabularies, or say a person dies and gets a death date in their authority record. Instead of tracking down every instance of that author or subject or title, you can just create change the authority record text and that will instantly update all linked bib records. To be linkable, the record only needs a main entry field. 
There are many functions, including duplication issues and matching, that benefit from more data in your authority record. But you can, and you can always create minimal authority records and clean them up later, either individually or in batches. Um, but all you need at a minimum for that link to happen is a main entry field and some of the fixed field information. So it can be very minimal. So in the catalog, on the drop-down menu, there really are only two authorities functions uh, that we can see. And we're going to visit both to see what a cataloger comes across day to day. The first one is us. For searching the authority table, you will use the Manage Authority Records drop-down. Now, this I'm going to try and open it so we can do a browse search of the authorized term headings, okay? Can you see my live Chrome? Yes, we can. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we're going to catalog and we're going to manage authorities. So this is in the test server that King County Library System set up for us. So anything that I do in here is, is not real. It's on a small test site because we're gonna merge some things and look at some things. We're gonna start with Dr. Seuss, whose example I used earlier. And Dr. Seuss is going to live in a 100 main entry. So I am going to search for him as an author type. And this is your Manage Authority Records table. It shows 15 per page, and it is just a browse search. It has searched the first three letters of the 100 field of the main entries. And we have a few Dr. Seuss records, most of which do not have links. So to show you, this is the authority record ID. It is the equivalent of a TCN for a bib record. The next column is linked bibs. The next column is the heading. And then you have some columns about what vocabulary it's using um, and the control set that comes from the fixed field information, uh, who created it, and then there are a few options for how long it's been in the catalog. So we're going to just search to see what this table exactly shows us. Okay. You notice that record ID 516 had one linked BEP record, and it is to this. And if I want to see that link, I'm going to look for the Dr. Seuss cat in the hat that has the subfield zero added. And there is the authority record number 634. Now, you might notice that it is linked to an 800 field of cat in the hat. And that is because of how the authority uh, records, the mark for authority files talks to the mark records. It's sort of the last couple numbers of uh, like the 100 field in the uh, main entry of the authority record will link with the 100, the 600, the 700, or the 800 field in a bib record. And that's a way that they're complementary. Here we have Dr. Seuss, the cat in the hat come back. And this is an authority record that's linked to four different bib records, and I could click on them one by one, and you could see that this has a 700 field linking to this, to the record. Okay. So there's not actually really much else you can do in the authority table, um, except one function that you can do is now yesterday I made one master authority record for the cat in the hat comes back by Dr. Seuss in all the languages so that I could show you this tomorrow today. I'm going to mark these for merge. I have all of the information from records 636 and 637 merged into the record for 635 and I am going to now merge them. I first right click marked them for merge and now I am going to merge the mark record and choose the main one. Okay. So now there is only one cat in the hat comes back link. I don't see it, but presumably it's there. The uh, other thing I wanted to search was that even though 
those suits titles are title searches. If I were to try to search the title cat in the hat comes back, I do not actually get that result because this is simply a browse search and it searches the authority tables by only the subfield A of the main entry, which is not ideal. Okay. So to summarize, authority type is based on mark for authorities. So author searches 100 and 110 of the main entry, subject 150 and 151. Um, it's just a snapshot of the inventory of authority records and the links. You can't actually open the authority record from this interface, like if you wanted to edit, or if you had wanted to like double check my work before I merged those three in the in the demo. Retrieve authority record by ID is the other menu option. Um, and it is one of two ways to actually open the individual authority records to make edits. Um, the ID number can be found in the previous search. I merged 636 and 637 into 635, uh, but it also appears in that subfield zero of the linked bibliographic field. So when I highlighted the 800 that had the Dr. Seuss link in it, the last information on it was the authority record number. And then if you actually have like an export of your authority files, just like the TCN, the authority record ID lives in the 001 and the 901C of the authority records. So let's retrieve authority records by ID. Show you a really minimal authority record first. This is one that came over from my library. And it is just North Carolinaana, North Carolinaana, and legacy heading from the State Library of New York. It's been around for hundreds of years and it's used as a 650 term. Um, there's minimal. Uh, fixed field entry, and that's fine. Evergreen doesn't really require a lot of fixed field entries. I don't think it reads them that much. And then the other one I wanted to do was 627. This, on the other hand, is from the Library of Congress. Um, so you can see it has a lot of related information. Um, it has the topic in various languages and various scripts. And it has pseudonyms because Dr. Seuss wrote under a number of different names. And then it has all of the references uh, that go into making the authority record. And this you can just export from Library of Congress, import into your catalog and uh, link from it immediately. And that's it for the authority functions that you can access from the actual cataloging menu. Most of the authorities work kind of goes on from the bib record as part of a workflow. So I've organized the rest of the presentation in a, by frequently asked questions because that's how the authorities working group started trying to tackle like making sense of the authorities. And it seemed to work really well for us to organize things. So hopefully I will start with the most obvious questions. Um, how do I link bib fields to authority records? And this is part one. Uh, Evergreen really wants to link them. So the first night the record is in Evergreen, um, it will automatically run the 100 fields, the 600 fields, the 700 fields, 800 fields against the authority tables. and it will actually create links, but it creates links on really perfect matches. Uh, if you have letter for letter typed in the 400 field for Harry Potter, like down to the subfield C and the punctuation mostly, um, that will link overnight. And I made this little table. It's just a visual to show how very minor variations, including a subfield Q instead of a C, including no subfield or some extra spacing or leaving out part of it, that is not going to link overnight, um, which is good. You don't want 
uh, someone. You don't want John Smith, no dates, to link with John Smith 1957 through whatever, because they're not the same. These aren't the same. We'll do more examples of this as we're revisiting in slides later. But how do I really link bib records to authority records? And realistically, your bib record has at least one field with a minor variation in punctuation or a variant subfield or is missing a subfield or a delimiter. And it didn't make that overnight link cut. Or you've made edits to it and it's just not going to get automatically linked. So for these, you need to make linking a part of your workflow. Um, when I'm cataloging, I always end in enhanced mode and hit the validate button. The validate button will tell you if the system thinks that it has a link in the authority tables. And if it does seem to have a link, you can create a link to that record and play with the authorities in, in the tables. Let's just look at it rather than me trying to describe it. Okay, we are starting from, I have enhanced this record in the test server so that we can pretend I've been cataloging and now I'm going to hit the validate button and it highlights all of the fields that Evergreen knows should link to the authority tables. Okay, so I have lots of variations of Dr. Seuss in here and most of them are wrong. Okay, so I clicked that link button next to it and it is saying, I've trawled the tables and let, I think I have a match for you. And so I'm going to navigate through. And it has created an authority record for Dr. Seuss. Okay, so that worked on the 100 and the authorized term is in the 100 of the fixed field, but that would also work in a 600 or a 700. And if I fix that, I can apply. Okay, so it also tells me that um, this title author, uh, authority field has a link. And this is going to bring us it's telling me my original source, house document. I'm going to look through and alphabetically, you can see that unlike the browse function in manage authority records, this is searching some of the, I, you know, house document is searching subfields. It's searching for house and not just alphabetically. So this, okay, I made a mistake. Start over. house document and we can apply and that makes the link to the 612. So that is how linking works in the authority records. Now, how would I create, you know, had we navigated around those fields and not seen an authority record in the pop-up, how do I create a new authority record? Um, it's actually the same as the linking process in the previous slide, but you've navigated through the link pop-ups and just can't find the term. You've also checked manage authority and find that you don't have the necessary authority record brought into your system. In this case, you can use other buttons in the links pop-up to create a new record, either immediately or create an update um, by updating fixed fields and numbers and things. So... Here we go. We have stories in rhyme English. We're going to validate. Oh, I didn't save. Okay. We're going to do stories in rhyme English. And in the pop-up, it's telling me stories in rhyme. Here's a fast heading for stories in rhyme. Let's see what that heading looks like. Stories in rhyme fast. No, that's not exactly it.
the results in the pop-up are not always the most obvious uh, results. Okay, so I am just not seeing stories and rhyme English as a 650. So I am going to create an edit using this button. Okay, and this is the most minimal authority record. If you wanted to, you could create A 450, a 550, you can do anything you want, uh, whatever works for your system. And save changes. And it has created an authority for stories in rhyme English that you can then link to from any bibliographic record. Now, how do I import these authority records? It's pretty much like importing bib records. You just select the record type authorities. So it will know that your data is in mark for authorities format. Um, I don't know for sure how it's matching for overlays though. There are somehow tons of duplicates in our test database, which has a lot of minimal authority records. So I suspect, whereas there are very few duplicates in like NC Cardinal. So I'm suspecting that it weights some of the numeric fields like the 010 and the 020, sort of like it does on bib record imports. Um, so, this is definitely an area that we need to investigate, particularly if you're like modifying your own records and not downloading them directly from Library of Congress or something. Um, and then you can also choose 901C match for importing. That is a good control if you've actually exported some of your records for cleanup and are bringing them back in. You can do a direct authority overlay that way to uh, ensure uh, fewer duplicates. And I get authority records. Um, some libraries use a vendor to provide authorities. NC Cardinal has a subscription for quarterly authorities work um, that's been going on a few years. It's great. I think it's very expensive. Um, if you're a library with an OCLC subscription, you can manually export uh, MARC formatted Library of Congress authority files. They do the name authority, the subject authority, the genre. Um, think you can get some of the Canadian subject files that way too. Um, I don't search for them, so I'm not 100% sure, but I believe you can. Um, and then most authority databases, including Library of Congress, Homosaurus, allow downloading of records, although they vary greatly in the format that they export them in and the, the ability they give you to like batch export records. You might have to export like one file at a time and it might be in MARC XML or MADS JSON or something that requires a little bit of um, work on the back end. Um, and then the last, you can make your own uh, if you have staff who can make the time. I've had good luck with data entry in Excel and MARC edit, particularly with uh, simpler or flatter vocabularies like the genres or the homosaurus that don't have a lot of subfields and a lot of details. So the authority functions are useful to catalogers if used consistently. And you can train staff to validate headings and, and search the headings and to be consistent with linkable fields and subfields. And this definitely makes for neater facets and um, better search results. But it's definitely an opportunity uh, to use the authorities to actually inform searching, like for patrons and for non-catalogers. That's a really hidden um, that's a really hidden product on our evergreen or on our NC Cardinal list serves about every two years we end up discussing um, how can I find the uh, the non authorized term for like this author who has a weird authority record or something. And the only catalog search function that currently queries the non preferred terms and related terms from the authority tables is the browse search. Uh, browse searching for 
non-preferred terms and related terms works in both the OPAC and the staff by it, but it is a browse search. So you again have to know like the starts with information for the four XX and the five XX fields in the authority record. I'll, I'll just show you a couple of examples and I'm just gonna go, this will be an NC Cardinal search. And we'll do fish farms, which was a 450 in fisheries from the first example. And you can just see, whereas um, a subject search wouldn't return anything fish farms unless it had the wrong term in it, the browse search will kind of point you in the right direction. Oh, I did titles, apologize. Gonna click it again. It was even slower when I did this at home. Here we go. So in the browse search, it will actually point you to the related term and give you a hyperlink so that you can see the, the proper search. I'm gonna do it again with authors. Since Dr. Seuss, the author, has some pseudonyms associated with him, um, you'll get more interesting results than with fish farms. And so we have a few results for Dr. Seuss and including I guess the Germanic spelling and a couple of results with Seuss doctor, probably with differences in punctuation in the record itself, but it does point you to, you can also search Geisel or Lesaig and Stone. So this is definitely an opportunity to train um, staff that if you don't find something in a subject or in a very specific subject or title or author search, um, Keyword search will catch things in the bib record, but browse search is currently the only search that will find the alternative information that exists in the authority files. Um, so it is both an opportunity, but it does seem like a shortcoming. So that was just a really quick introduction to authorities and how they can be manipulated in Evergreen. Um, just to summarize, the authorities can help keep metadata added entries tidy and predictable, and investing in them is valuable in many library environments. Um, but currently, they're not well documented or perfect, and as such, they're probably underutilized by a lot of members of the Evergreen community. Okay. If you're interested in anything that we've looked at, uh, please consider joining the Authorities Working Group, which is a subset of the Cataloging Interest Group. Um, you can contact Jennifer Weston or me to join the list and help us uh, document procedures, identify bugs, identify wish list items, and enjoy a working hour in the group. Um, we actually we have a lot of fun, so uh, I hope you'll think about it. And I just wanted to list some resources if you aren't familiar or, and want to play around with the mark. Um, 
these will get you started. And the first one is about uh, getting authority records through Z3950. Um, and then the Library of Congress authorities uh, page has an amazing FAQ section. And the other two are just about the MARC formatting. And I wanted to just throw this out there in case there are any programmer types here and interested. Um, the server administration lets you look at the mapping between the MARC and the BIB formats, um, the MARC, BIB, and authority formats. Um, you can look at some of the subfield mapping, the MADS to MARC information is in there, and I think some other like rules and coding related to the, the SORI. Uh, a lot of it is over my head, but I know that it's important for like seeing the source and reporting and things. And that was all I had prepared. Um, and so I'm going to try to open the Zoom because I, I hope there are questions and Are you able to see the chat, Jessica, and see the questions? No, let me find them. Now, this is the chat in Zoom, not in Facebook. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Just ceased my screen sharing. Let me open the chat. Yes. Yes, I am in the chat now. What do we have? Okay. I do not know of any libraries. This is uh, Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Um, I do not know of any libraries that manage authorities on their own without backstage or a subscription. My, my small library that is a member of NC Cardinal Consortium used to before Cardinal um, joined Markive. That's the batch resource we use. But it was really easy for us because we are an OCLC library member. We actually pay for the OCLC subscriptions. So looking for authorities at, uh, records as we imported authority, uh, bid records was part of the workflow. And it did take a lot of time. So um, it was like you have to search for original cataloging records and make your edits. You had to like search every single 100, 700 and save those and export them to the catalog. So uh, I think there's a reason those vendors exist um, and it is a lot of work, but I think you could probably take care of it if you weren't a huge library. Okay, ooh, do we need cat permissions to do this work? I don't think so. I don't know how every other library sets up cataloging permissions. Um, but I know that bib catalogers in bib catalogers in, in NC Cardinal can definitely do the links. Oh, thank you for putting heat um, into the heat into the bugs. We're we're at the stage in the authorities working group um, where there's so little documentation and we're kind of unfamiliar with it. So we don't always know what is a bug versus a wish list item. So Yes, I love the validate button too. Let's see. Yes, anything that would make it easier to search for authority records that you already own in the catalog would be amazing. Like there are just, you kind of have to trust that pop up that is saying, uh, we think we have some links for you and uh, here they are, and then they go on to display uh, these possible links to your subject or to our topic you're trying to link, and they're alphabetically all over the place, and you don't know 
why one is previous and another is next when there's just no rhyme or reason. So it's really not intuitive. And I, we have some like really complicated subject links. North Carolina politics and government subdivided by year is one where you have to go back like six screens to make a link in the catalog. I just know the numbers and paste in the little subfield zero because it's so annoying. So we did have a question way up top okay. there that I'm okay. afraid you may have missed. Is the validate button working pretty well now? I remember back in 2018 when they were learning authorities, um, it wasn't working consistently. Oh, hi, Wanangwa. Um, Yes, it's been working pretty well for the last few years, at least. I don't remember it not working in 2018, but that was about the time that we stopped doing our own authority stuff and NC Cardinal got the got the archive. So my amount of authority work like really went down then. Um, and where, what are we in? We're in 3.10 Monongwa. It's, it's fine now. Three point eleven. Thank you. Oh, so yes, I I played with. There's a question about when the authority records are merged and the related bib records are also updated. Yes, I played with it yesterday in the test server um, by probably improperly merging uh, things, but ones that had I merged a couple that already had at least one linked data and uh, or one linked bibliographic record and all of them sort of shot over just like almost like an item shoots over when you link uh merge bib records like the the subfield zero with the link got updated in all of the records so the the merge function does seem to work pretty well in um in the authorities function. I find it frustrating that when you are in there linking, you can't actually open the three at the same time, like in a pop-up and compare if you really want to merge and maybe make some edits just like you do when you're merging bib records, like having a duplicate interface to that sort of merge, I feel would make people more likely to have the confidence to work with the authority records without feeling quite so blind about it. Oh, that's just because it's the test server, I think. So like ours says NC Cardinal or Cardinal, but uh, I was working on the test server and I think it might just have like the default value, which makes it really long and easy to spot, but is kind of ugly. Ooh, authority buckets. I like it. Yes, lots of tabs or windows open. Oh, I didn't bring up some of the issues with the series and title authorities because I didn't want to come across as very negative, but there is an issue with uh, the title, with the title series records, because for some reason it seems to be the default because it happens in NC Cardinal and in the test server, but it will acknowledge that it has a link for a series that has a subfield V included, but it does not know what to do with the subfield V because it doesn't match exactly the authority record. So 
you often get like really ugly displays and links with uh, linking to a title that has a subfield V or I guess other numeric terms, but we most like we mostly have like a subfield V. Like it will not acknowledge that there is a link even if it has the exact title and a subfield V that tells you like the volume of the series. So it's problematic. Oh, create, edit, delete authorities. Oh, thank you for checking on that. Yes, the, the st uh, structure of the authority records has pretty much everything in the 100 through the 500 that is like content. And then the notes are in the 600s and there's some, you know, numeric stuff at the top and there's some RDA stuff in the middle, but that is just the, the Mark 21 for authorities data keeps it all in that little range. Yeah, thank you. So it's different, but it's kind of parallel to the fields that they might be using them in. I'm not sure what the reasoning is, but it works very well, so. We have about four minutes left. If anybody has any more questions, be sure to get them in. Thank you, I felt very awkward, but I love to work with the authorities. Um, they're, they're there and I think that they're, underlinked but it's so satisfying to like find a simple authority and just get in there and link it so um you should definitely play with it and see see if you can like get started i do a combination um i will create an authority rec well now that we have archive on Anga, you don't really have to you don't really have to worry about it they come in every four months but before we had, before we had Markive. Yes, thank you. I tried to mention King County a couple of times because we are so grateful. <laughs> and Wanangwa, um, you can find official ones uh, at the Library of Congress servers. And I will, before I put the final, um, PowerPoint up, I will add a couple of links for sources of authorities to that resources page at the end. Sure. Thank you all for listening. Um, I haven't given a talk in a really long time, so um, Thank you all for coming. I put my email if anybody has any questions and wants to ask me directly or uh, join the authorities working group, let me know. I think we are transitioning. This is the voice of Jennifer Weston. Can